Hi everyone, and welcome back to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a SSH tunnel, right? Uh, and use the local port forwarding feature to a Debian 11 server uh, on the internet, right? So um, it's always good for pen testers to get familiarized with the various tactics or techniques that the cyber criminal could be using, right? And uh, SSH tunnel, whether it's local port forwarding or a reverse port for forwarding capabilities is a commonly used feature by cyber criminal to get unauthorized access to your internal resources or internal application, right? Of course, uh, for those who are a little bit more tech savvy, uh, you might set up uh, a SSH proxy or SSH tunneling to get access to your resources or your test lab without having to open additional file port, firewall ports in the internet, right? So for this tutorial, uh, we'll look at how do we do local port forwarding. So I've set up a Debian server in the internet. I'm going, uh, and at the same time, I have set up a XRDP service on the Debian server. I'm going to just allow uh, port 22. So you will see, that in my tutorial later, uh, you know, how can we uh, turn on port 3389 just to show you that, um, you know, by turning port 3389, you can actually access the XRDP directly through the UFW firewall. Uh, and then I will show you how it looks like when I turn off port 3389. And then how do we use a very simple command to tunnel uh, port 3389 or XRDP to the SSH tunnel that we're going to establish. Right, so with that, let's hop over to my Linux instance. So let me just start afresh. Okay, so this is my Debian uh, server on the internet itself. So what we're going to do is to just take a quick look at our UFW firewall, right? So if I do a UFW status, Boss, I should see that currently I only have port 22 open, right? So look at my IP address. Okay, it's a public IP address. I'm going to tear down the server after this demo. Uh, so, you know, that's a good thing about having a cloud infrastructure, right? Uh, I'm using DigitalOcean, right? And it allows me to quickly spin off a BPS for my testing, my uh, coding, my development, Right, uh, and it is really fast, and yeah, it allows me to do a lot of testing, uh, you know, quickly without having to keep my infrastructure in my on prem uh, environment. Okay, so let's start off by just you know enabling uh, 3389. So let me just use as sudo ufw allow 3389. So this is a command, so you can see. Uh, you can use the UFW show added command to see what is being added, or you can just use the status verbose command, and you can see that we have 3389 open. Now, now let me hop over to my RDP client, right? So over here, I have configured, you know, a direct uh, public IP address, and then I'm going to try and connect. As you can see, when I try to initiate, it will prompt me to connect. And then all I need to do is to enter my username and password. And then I'm able to access the uh, Debian machine, right? I have fixed the internet connection and the browser I've downloaded, uh, you know, Firefox, and you can see that now I'm able to go into my Debian machine, right? I have a graphical web user interface. And uh, if you're keen to check out my enabling, enabling SSH key-based login, you can check out my tutorial and my video. Okay, so that's 
an example of how you can quickly, you know, add a a loud port on a, on your UFW firewall, and you can now use um, the graphical user interface in your cloud instance. It's useful for pen testing, useful for testing, um, you know. So that's one of the use cases that you will see. So once that's done, let me just disconnect, and then what I'm going to do is to delete the allow. 3389 port, right? So it's deleted. If I do a you have the new status boss, you can see that it's deleted. And if I try to connect now, you will see that you will time out in a bit. Okay. So that's how easy it is to do the configuration. So to initiate the command to connect or establish the tunnel for port forwarding. Okay, you can see that it's disconnected. Let's just do this. Um, the syntax is actually very easy, right? So you can see here, um, the syntax is really SSH, you know, using the minus L option. You can specify the bind address, the port, the remote host, the remote port, and then followed by the user login, right? If you're using um, user password, username and password login, this is the syntax. Uh, if you want to establish with a more secure uh, SSH key-based login, um, you just need to add in the minus I followed by the private key syntax. Okay, so we're going to use uh, the key-based login. All right, this is more secure. So let's hop over. Let's um, change my folder to my key so that it's easier, right? So I'm going to use the command SSH followed by minus I followed by the key, right? And then now um, you can specify all address and just specify the port that you want to connect or you can, in my case, only allow local host to connect, right? Which is uh, 127.0.0.1 followed by port. I can use port 3389 or any other port, right? To make it simple, I'm going to use 3389 and then followed by colon and the IP address, right? So let's check the IP address. Okay, my public IP address is the following. Just copy. And then followed by the username. And then the server IP, right? So you can see it's as simple as that, right? So you have, once that is done, Oops, sorry. I have uh, missed out the remote port, 3389, okay. And sorry, I have left out the minus L, right? So, okay, now it will try to connect. Right, I have set up a passphrase for my private key to make it a little bit more secure. So I'm going to key in the passphrase. This is not the password of the a user. It's the passphrase that you have uh, specified to create uh, when you are creating the uh, private and public key pair. Right, if you have not entered a passphrase, then you will not see the prompt. Okay, so once it's done, you can see that you have established a connection. Right, so if I go over back to my Debian server, which is same, right? And I do a net stat minus ANTP. You will see that currently there is a um, established from my machine, right? So you can see that there's two SSH session established. And then what we're going to do is to clear this. Okay, and then now um, what I'm going to do is to show you on the RDP side, right? Just to show you that the 3389 port is not turned on for the firewall. We will try and connect it through the uh, public IP address. You can see that it is getting 
timeout, right? At the same time, what we're going to do is to, as you can see, it's timeout. We have blocked the connection directly. Now we're going to do is to change this, right? Uh, by using the SSH tunnel, just make it easier. And then instead of keying in the public IP address, I'm going to use the dot zero dot one, right? And then I'm going to save this, and then I'm going to initiate the tunnel. So you can see, right? We get prompted with the user name and password. Okay, and you can see that we have logged into the RDP session, right? Using the tunnel, right? And I would be able to surf the internet as per normal. It looks a little bit faster, to be frank. And then if I do a next step, minus NTP, you will see that I have established a port Three three through three three eight nine, right? So a port has been established through three three eight nine, and you will realize that it is through the public IP address. So this is a tunnel. We have the uh, tunnel established using port two to port twenty two, and then we have now established a remote RDP session through the SSH tunnel. So that's how easy to do a forward or local port forwarding, right? Uh, we will look at a reverse port forwarding that is a very common um, use case by cyber criminal to get access uh, by opening up specific ports for you know communication back to the server to try and do more malicious activities. Right, so hopefully, uh, you know, this tutorial is helpful for those who are trying out, um, you know, local port forwarding through SSH tunnel. And if you are doing your OSCP, I think understanding the local port forwarding and reverse port forwarding uh, is also useful uh, in some of the tutorial and the lab that you're doing, right? To understand how to uh, use SSH tunneling to get into uh, the internal zone right um you know so these are very useful command very useful capabilities especially if you are learning um you know a great way to set up a lab in the cloud and test out your uh, environment okay hopefully with that you know uh, it helps you in your lab or testing environment and stay tuned for the next video where i will be doing the uh, reverse port forwarding example. Thank you and stay safe.